up to this point, we've been making the assumption that the data that we get is sufficiently well organized such that we can apply verbs like group by, summarize, and mutate to answer the analytic question that we might have. However, many times the data we get isn't formatted in a way that lets us use those verbs to get to an answer. And it's mainly because the data is not tidy. So what do we mean by tidy data? What I mean specifically is three items that are kind of things that come from Hadley Wickham's R for Data Science book and a article that was written by Hadley Wickham on this topic. And Hadley Wickham, for those of you that don't know, is kind of the author of many of the tidyverse packages. So in his article, he argues that a data set is tidy if each variable has its own column, each observation has its own row, and each value has its own cell. And while that seems pretty obvious, you'll see how data sets can be untidy in quite a number of different ways. The tidy data chapter in the R for Data Science book has these two uh, really nice quotes that describe how tidy data sets are kind of like happy families. Where all happy families are alike, every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. And similarly, while tidy data sets are all alike, every messy data set is messy in its own way. One of the reasons that you find data often that's not tidy when you're working with health data is that the way that data needs to be structured for making data entry easy is usually different than the way you want your data structured for data analysis. And even then, depending on the actual question you have, you may want your data to be structured slightly differently um, from question to question. And so the advantage of long versus wide data um, often depend on the actual question at hand. And wideness or kind of width of the data isn't a binary thing. It's more of a continuum. And you'll notice through the examples that we cover in class that there's really no such thing as a uniformly wide or uniformly long data set. It's typically, you know, variations on a theme where there's different levels of kind of wide data or long data. But the key thing is that when the data comes in a form that doesn't fit your analysis plan, reshape it so that you can actually run the functions that you learned last week using group by, summarize, and mutate. Let's say you wanted to answer the question, do more men or women have a college degree? How would you prefer this data set to be shaped? So let's start by loading the data set in using library nHANES and then data nHANES. And then let's take a look at the data set on the left. In this data set, there are three columns, gender, education, and number, or num. And if you wanted to answer the question of whether more men or women have a college uh, education, you would actually need to compare across multiple rows. And after a lot of looking, I find that there are 1,099 women who have a college degree and 999 men who have a college degree. When I first asked this question, I might have envisioned in my head a data set that looked more actually something like this, where education is what I'm comparing. And I just want to know for a given education level, in this case, college graduate, are there more female than, females than males in the data set? And so in this case, the comparison is really easy, you know, from a visual standpoint, because the 1099 women is positioned right next to the 999 men. And so I would argue that given these two choices in how you want the data to be preferred, I would prefer the data to be structured the way it is on the right and not on the left. Since we haven't yet learned how to create the data frame on the right, let's start by creating the data frame on the left. So in this data frame, the output we want will have three columns, gender, education, and num. And what you can pretty quickly get a sense of here is that gender and education are actually grouping columns because we've got every combination of the two columns here. So for example, we've got female eighth grade, female ninth to 11th grade, and we have the same thing for male, 
with male in 8th grade and male in 9th to 11th grade. And the num here is just the count of the number of rows. So the way we create this from the raw NHANES data set that we read in from the NHANES package is we start with NHANES, we group by gender, comma, education, and then we summarize by counting the number of rows using the n helper function and assigning it to a column named num, n-u-m. And notice that we chose to group by gender first and then education when we did this, um, although we could have done it the other way around. One of the problems with grouping by gender first and then ed education is that because the data was sorted by gender first and then education, it was hard to compare college education for men and women because they were just multiple rows apart from one another. Another way we could have done this is by sorting by education first and then by gender such that the college education or college degree is you know, one row apart from one another and then the female and male is one row apart. And this is not the preferred uh, data frame for me, which was that one on the right, but it's a little bit closer. So let's see, how would we create this uh, you know, from the NHANES data set? Well, if we had already grouped by gender education like we did on the last slide and summarized to count the number of rows, then we could arrange by education and gender. And even though our grouping first arranged by gender and education, using the arrange verb will help us arrange by education and then gender. And the values for male and female with a college degree will actually be one row apart, just like they are in the data frame above. Or another way to do, get the kind of similar result would be to group by first education, then gender, and then you summarize to calculate the counts. Again, in my view, this is still a little bit harder to read than if we had separate columns for female and male. So the next thing we'll do is to talk about how we can create those columns from this data frame. We've already talked about how to create the data frame on the top right, which is to say, start with NHANES, group by gender and education, and then summarize to count the number of rows for each of the grouping categories. If we wanted to convert the top right data frame into the bottom right data frame, we only have to add one more function to that pipe. And that's the spread function. What the spread function does is tells R, take the first argument, which is in this case, uh, gender, look at the unique values of gender and turn those unique values into columns. So in this case, there's only two unique values, female and male. And so those actually now becomes, become columns in the data set. Well, what are the values that should be entered below those columns? You have to give it um, an idea of where to pull the values that you want to insert. And so in this case, we tell it the numbers we actually want to place below female and male are the numbers in that num column, N-U-M. And so if you add the spread gender comma num function to that existing piped set of functions, it'll help you convert the data frame on the top right into the data frame on the bottom right. Spread is the function that we use when we want to go from long data and turn it into wide data. If you look at the help function for spread, you'll notice that it takes uh, several different arguments. The only required arguments that you have to provide are the first three, which are data, key, and value. Data doesn't really count because when you pipe a data frame into the spread function, that's where the data is coming from. So ignore that one. So really in that case, the only two arguments that you need to supply to spread are the key and the value where the key is the column whose values will be used as column headings. In this case, uh, 
the values of gender are female and male, and so those will become the column headings. And the value is the name of the column whose values will populate the actual cells. And so in this case, the num column is actually where the values are drawing from that are going to enter the female column and the male column. So going back to this question, you know, which is the right shape? Well, the right shape of the data actually depends on its purpose. And so you really can't say in this case which is the right shape until you know which the analytic question is. One important thing to note is that wide and long data are really relative concepts. The way I actually differentiate these two is that in long data, one or more columns gives context as to what a value in another column stands for. So for example, when we had the long form of data, the gender and education column gives context as to what the num column means in the long data. Like if you only had the num column, you wouldn't know what it's referring to without having access to the gender and education columns alongside it. However, when you had wide data, the meaning of each number can be derived just from the name of the category alone. And so the column female refers to the number of females and the column male refers to the number of males in the wide data. And you didn't really need to know anything about the other columns to be able to kind of understand what the female and male columns stood for. If you're a visual person, I drew these funny lines just to indicate how the long data set relates to the wide data set. So one way, one way in which they're connected is that the values of the long data set actually become column headings in the wide data set. In this case, I happen to spread the gender variable such that the unique values of gender were the ones that become the columns in the wide data set, but I could have just as easily spread the education variable to make multiple columns for each of the types of education. So if the question is, do more men or women have a college degree? My preference is actually for the wide data set here because I'm able to just compare side by side and see that there's more, men, more women with college degrees than men. In the case of the data frames on the last slide, you might have noticed that both of the data frames actually only had three columns. And so it would be totally fair of you to ask, why am I referring to one of them as wide and one of them as long when they actually have the same number of columns? In this case, they had the same number of columns only because the variable we spread on, which is gender, has only two categories. Typically though, when we spread a variable, it will have more than two categories. And so if we had spread the education variable, we would have a data set that is definitively wider than the long form of the data set. So just recognize that, you know, data being wide or long is really more of a relative thing than necessarily a numerical thing because you can have a data set, one of which is wide and one of which is long, where they're actually the same number of columns. Um, but most of the time, when we say wide, you know, uh, the data set actually is wider because information that was previously present in a single column has now been spread out into several columns worth of information. What if we had gotten the data in the wide format and we needed to go back to the long format? So let's just first run the code that we already did before to generate that data frame on the top right, which is the wide format. So we start with nHanes, we group by gender education, we count the number of rows, and then we spread the gender uh, to become separate columns. And then we assign that to nHanes underscore wide, which is a new data frame, which is our wide format. When we wanna go from long to wide, we use the spread function and when we want to go back from wide to long, we use the gather function because we want to gather up those columns that we created, or if you know that maybe is the way that we got the data set in the first place, and we want to gather those multiple columns back into a single column. The way the gather function works is that, again, you supply the gender and num argument just like you did for spread except you have a third argument that you supply 
which tells Gather which columns that you actually want to go ahead and gather. So why does spread need only two arguments while gather needs three arguments? If you recall, when we spread the gender variable to become multiple columns with one column for each unique value of gender, the gender variable and the num variable already existed in the data frame. And we didn't actually have to tell the pipe which uh, data frames to create because the spread function by its very nature looks at the unique values of gender and knows that those are the variables that it needs to create. When you're going in the opposite direction and gathering columns of data, things are a little bit more complicated. First, remember that when you spread the data on the gender variable, you created these two new columns, female and male, which contain all the information. And the num column went away because the information that was in the num column and the values of the num column are now actually spread out amongst the female and male columns. So when you want to go back and gather the female and male columns, you first have to tell it what's the variable name which is going to contain the uh, column headings that you had created previously with the spread function. In other words, female and male need to go into a new column. What is that column going to be called? And that's the first argument that you provide to gather. Second, remember that that num column has gone away because the count is now spread out in the female and male columns. So the second argument you tell gather is what new variable are you creating that's going to contain all that count information? And finally, if you look in the you know, help function, you'll notice that there's a dot, dot, dot. And dot, dot, dot basically stands for name all the columns that you actually want to go ahead and gather. And this dot, dot, dot supports all of the same lingo and syntax as the select function. So when I say nhanes wide, then gather gender, comma, num, comma, female to male, what I'm basically saying is, create a new column called gender, and the things that I'm going to tell you to gather, the column headings should go into the gender variable that's going to be newly created. Create a new column called num. The values in the actual cells for the columns that I'm gathering are going to go into this num variable. And then the actual columns I want you to go ahead and gather are all the columns between female and male, which in this case happens to be only uh, the female and male column. Let's review the difference between spread and gather. Spread is used to take long data and make it wide, whereas gather is used to take wide data and make it long. When you use this spread function, you have to supply two arguments, a key and a value. And when you use the gather function, you have to supply three arguments, a key, a value, and then the actual columns that you want to gather. And remember that in the spread function, a key points to the variable containing the column names that you're going to be creating. So in this case, the example that we had was gender is the uh, key variable because it contains the values female and male, which are going to become the new column names. And then the value is actually the number uh, that's going to get inserted into the cells of the newly created columns. And so in the example we had on the previous slide, num is the value because the num column contains the actual numbers that will get inserted into the cells of female and male. And missing values become NA by default, um, but there is a way to override that using the fill argument in the spread function, which you can read about in the help. Gather is used to take wide data and make it long, and it requires three arguments. The key, uh, the key variable contains or rather points to a variable that will contain the, new, the column names. And remember that the key doesn't actually exist yet. Um, so when you say gather gender, that gender variable is actually going to be created um, and doesn't exist yet. The value points to the variable that will contain the number uh, from the columns that are gathered. And remember that when you use the uh, value in the gather function, that variable does not exist yet. 
So when we did gather gender comma num, that was creating the columns gender and num, not pointing to existing columns. And the column names are actually a collection of unquoted column names. And these can be separated by commas, by uh, colons, if you want all the columns uh, between you know, uh, one column and another column. Or it can be column numbers even, um, and that will work as well. And that's telling the gather function which columns to go out and gather, because many times there's other columns you don't want to touch um, that you won't want to select as part of that gather function.